like to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. You know, as a, a voice uh, for highly on holdings here uh, as of late, uh, I find it um, that I've been put into a very interesting position, one that I take on with a hundred percent conviction. Uh, I'm very, very uh, glad to do it. I know there's a lot of phenomenal minds that are involved in this company, a, a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more to offer um, in um, than, than I actually have. A lot of um, discussions that I have with truck driving communities, um, a lot of um, savvy investors, a lot of technicians, a lot of fundamentalists, uh, as well as a lot of people that I've come across as well in the Yahoo thread that I do frequent. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty quick to bash on those because they are open forum. But uh, just want to point out the good work of uh, a, a poster in there that goes by the name of uh, The Real Christopher and um, really, really sharp investor. And a um, lot of opportunities to get uh, amplifying information on Hylion through a lot of Discord opportunities. If you are genuinely interested in those uh, opportunities, they are out there. And all you've got to do is just be a little bit proactive and lean into this opportunity if you want to get more information outside of just what I try to offer with my uh, perspective on Hylion. I reached out to the company at a great discussion last week with the company. It was about a two hour conversation. We talked about a myriad of different products. I'm going to get into the best shot that I can and really try to capture what it was that we discussed over two hours uh, in about a 30 minute video. I'm going to try to keep this as light as I can because I'm going to try to push this video out through other social media conduits through my podcast. Um, and may actually do up a blog article on Hylion, and it's a, a better fit if I can keep this under 30 minutes. So that's what I intend on doing. Before we get into what was discussed, I would just like to uh, introduce the potential, if we are ever provided the opportunity to interview uh, the CEO and founder of Hylion, Mr. Thomas Healy, we'd be glad to have him. It's an open invitation on the channel, but I need your help. So instead of leaving comments, hey, thanks for the video, Ryan. These are very, very well received because I speak uh, along the same tone uh, for a lot of investors who may not have the voice that I do. And I echo a lot of the same sentiments that a lot of investors have um, on what has been a, a fairly dismal stock performance. I need you to leave your questions for Thomas Healy in the comment section below. And what I'd like everybody to do is review said comments that are left in the question section. If you like the question, upvote it, upvote it. And instead of me coming up with a bunch of questions for an interview of Mr. Healy, if I'm provided that opportunity, um, I will take the voice of the retail community to Thomas Healy instead. I think that's a much better way of doing that. And what I will do is I will go through, uh, I will review the most upvoted questions in the thread and uh, and I will frame those in a way that is succinct and I will take the intent of the author's message and I will push that over for legal vetting re and review prior to uh, the interview if in fact we are granted that opportunity. I just think it's the best way of making sure that everybody feels connected to this opportunity because I think this movement with Hyleon is somewhat special. I think we're probably in about the deepest, darkest time for the stock performance as we speak. As I put out these videos, I think it's the most prudent to bring investors to an opportunity when there are the least amount of investors looking at said opportunity. Okay. And if you ever thought that the stock was a good opportunity at 20 or 30 and or beyond, um, I think here at 850 in an oversold condition, in a very, very heavily shorted condition, it's never, ever been a better time to step into what I feel like is a phenomenal opportunity um, with which what's being kind of explained to me is as somewhat of a venture company. And I'll explain what I mean by that in the uh, press that I put on uh, highly on during our call because there was a ton of different topics there uh, that we broached. 
The first of which I would like to discuss is winter sales coming. Okay, winter sales coming. We've been on a little bit of a quiet period, and I think there's some level of angst across the investor community with the lack of um, information out there on the social media. I don't think that's uh, a mistake. I think there's a reason behind it, and I'm entitled to my opinion. We just had of late the new uh, hybrid version of the uh, hybrid system come out uh, and is available now. And the uh, projection from Hylion is that uh, we will be realizing revenues on those products in 2021. My initial thought was that, you know, where are the sales? Where are the sales? Where are the sales? And I think we are slightly premature on this, specifically with the hybrid. Remember that the hybrid product has been out with multiple fleets, okay? A lot of fleets that were not selected as part of the Innovation Council. Of note, the three companies, Tillamook Creamery uh, and a couple others up in the Northwest properties, actually put the hybrid uh, to unit to work uh, on the multiple road systems up there and you remember that those results came back extremely positive. I pressed on that. If these companies were so impressed by the product, why didn't they return orders? Why didn't they come back and say, man, we want this, we want this? What Hylian's response was very, very good. What they said was, we could have sold them units, absolutely. But it's almost like buying the iPhone 12, knowing that the iPhone 13 is just around the corner. And it's really, really tough to be that person that buys the old product without the new or incorporated technology, it, knowing that it's right around the corner. So with that said, Hylion actually took the high road on this and knew that since the um, new hybrid version was coming out, that those customers would be better served with the new technology. And it goes even one further. If you do sell them an old hybrid product, when you know that those new innovations are coming down the line, it really speaks to the conviction and understanding that you really run the risk of upsetting a new customer to say, man, you know, you guys knew that this was going on and you decided to sell us the old product just for the sake of selling product. It really resonated with me, and it kind of speaks to where Hylion is right now in the product development phase, and I really want you to compartmentalize the two products, the ERX product and the hybrid version uh, of the uh, improved upon model. The hybrid version is ready to go. Those million road miles plus and the multiple companies that have put this product in place for proof of concept and product of validation is done, is done. Now, I don't know what's going on. One of two things is going on. Either the product is falling on its face and they have zero odors to show for it, or they do. One of those situations are playing out as we speak. We don't know because Hylion has entered into what has been perceived to be, and quite frankly, what I've deemed to be somewhat of a quiet period. And this was actually part of my um, thesis and reaching out for them is to, prov to get some level of clarity around what's going on behind the scenes a little bit. So more to follow on that. I think it's an interesting situation to be in, especially with the hybrid, knowing that those companies had such positive results is that product validation that has already gone on with the hybrid product going to pay off on the back end. Hylion says that they're going to realize revenues. I have no reason to believe that that positive uh, reception of the hybrid version isn't going to materialize down the line. This is just how things work, guys. The product has to be put in the hands of customers. We got to speak uh, a lot about Detmar Logistics, who anybody who covers Hylion knows that they put in a sizable order initially for the hybrid unit and then followed up shortly with... Uh, the 300 Hypertruck ERX orders through the Alpha One. Now, they are a private company, and they are not part of the Innovation Council. Very, very interesting takeaway from how uh, big of an advocate uh, the CEO, I believe, of the company, Mr. Anders, I believe is his name. Uh, I may be mistaking there, but 
Detmar as a company, it's amazing how well that's been received and how much advocacy is going out in the oil and gas industry, but specifically the oil sands industry um, with Detmar's customers to advocate for the, the product. This takeaway for me was key on this call. And it really spoke to me in what I would love to see in the news to see thousand hyper truck ERX orders come through thousand on their order book come through for the hybrid version really made me step back off of that path and say, look, with the ability of an agility right now to just walk clean away from their thousand orders that have really kind of solidified this highly on story throughout even back into the SPAC story, they threw their name in the hat right away. Okay. I would tend to put more value on somebody on the Hypertruck ERX uh, council uh, to put in an order of five to 10 Hypertruck ERXs. And here's why. What this does is that basically substantiates the product validation that's going on with the fleets. Okay. And really help to secure their place on the innovation council, as well as to secure their place to say, yes, we absolutely are in line with this technology. We intend in good faith to start to incorporate this into uh, our fleet rotation. Now I say five to 10 and a lot of you might be thinking that's not good enough, Ryan. They're not going to meet their projections uh, that was really floated to investors on the initial rollout in the May 2020 investor presentation. I agree with you. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But here's what it does mean. It means that these fleet, uh, these fleets are standing up and saying, yep, we're going to put these fleets in place. And I pressed highly on on this and I said, why don't they do it now? What is keeping these companies by putting a token order? They know that they're going to get a free Hypertruck Alpha 1. They know that they're going to get a free uh, Hypertruck ERX. Why not put five orders on the books? It's a non-binding order. And that I was a little bit uh, disappointed to hear that they're working on that. But we're just a little bit premature on that ask. And I pressed and it was my job to press. And they really didn't have a very good answer for me. And my thing was like, look, if they're not going to hold true on their place on the Hypertruck Innovation Council, kick them off. Ask them to leave. Like you, you guys seem to be working from a position of desperation rather than a position of, uh, of offensive confidence. In other words, if there's anybody on the Innovation Council that truly does not want to be there and there were other fleets that were willing to step in and, and, and be called upon on this uh, Innovation Council, then replace them. What was assured to me is that everybody on the Innovation Council absolutely wants to be there and absolutely wants to be uh, uh, really seen as an industry partner with Hylion. We're just a little bit premature right now because of what's being promised in 2021 into 2022 with the product validation of Alpha 1. Okay, We've just stepped out of it with the hybrid version. We're stepping into it with Alpha 1. Now, what does that mean? Imagine Hylion jumping on the phone and having to cold call these companies, even with the established relationship and talking to the fleet operations managers and having to try to sell them at this point on the Hypertruck ERX. Don't you think that it's a better opportunity to put the product in the hands of these fleets? Keep in mind, guys, these decisions come with them an inherent level of risk, new technology, okay? Getting it wrong. We spoke about that as well. Companies don't want to be that company out there that gets it wrong. They all want to be called upon uh, with those companies that get it right. They do get with those companies that actually have a solution that worked. That product validation that's going to come down the line is going to come with the right along. It's going to absolutely be getting these uh, trucks in the hands of these drivers and having those ride-alongs happen with the executives to say, wow, look at the performance of this. Look at how things look from a driver's perspective. Look at how comfortable this thing is to drive. 
look at this data that we've been able to gather and now we can take that data and push it forward into the potential projections on the bottom line now we can really not only substantiate and not just make a paper order or a token order of five to ten hypertruck erx's but we can absolutely with certainty because we've gone through the product validation stage put in, in that order with the anticipation and the substantiation that we are going to put in return orders okay it's really just speaks to the rapport and the ability to solidify a customer not just sell them on a one-time deal but to solidify a customer and that's what's going on right now with what's being considered to be the product validation phase, product validation phase. So if you want to come to me or you want to bark about the stock price being in its dismal place, I do contend that we are probably in the deepest and darkest place right now with this stock. Is it trading at rock bottom? Perhaps. Could it go to five? Certainly. I have no no qualms about saying that this stock could do whatever it is that this stock is going to do. What does that mean with the phase that Hylion is going through right now? Nothing. Right now, what they are going through with these 11 uh, Innovation Council members is the product validation stage. Now, Detmar will receive one of these demo units because here's the thing. I really want you guys to resonate with this idea. Once we get these companies, and they're not there yet, even the Innovation Council, there are discussions going on behind the scene. There are The sales team is hard at work getting those cross uh, relationships established. They have visited most all of the Innovation Council members. They have sat with them. A um, lot of things that I heard during my conversation that was disclosed to me that I unfortunately cannot disclose over social media. But if you think for a second that the relationships are not being established with Hylion Holdings and these Innovation Council members, you would be wrong. You would be wrong. These relationships are being fortified and forged right now. And these industry relationships, the very network that they're looking to forge in a relationship through the Innovation Council are going to be key, key to the growth and development to the mass scale up that Hylion is projected to have in the coming years. We'll explain that in just a little bit. The Innovation Council, I pressed on this big time because I said, why 11? Would you ever consider expanding upon the Innovation Council and opening it up to a nice round number of 15? How about 20? Why would you consider some and not the other? The answer that I got was very, very valuable in that, yes, there were multiple people who actually suffered from a little bit of FOMO and actually called and said, hey, what about me? Why wasn't I considered for this Innovation Council? Could it be potential that those companies that were left off of the Innovation Council receive or have the opportunity to put in hypertruck orders uh, above the Innovation Council? Absolutely, 100%. Just because you're on the Innovation Council does not mean that that somehow puts you in the line. Money talks, bullshit walks, okay, and orders are going to be what solidifies that that rank and order and structure. And quite frankly, these are all publicly traded companies on the Innovation Council. M my hats go off to Detmar Logistics, who's taking a smaller fleet and putting it out there on the open and saying, I'm using the Hylion opportunity to expand upon my fleet. Are we going to deliver 300 hyper trucks to the front door of Detmar Logistics on day one? No, that's not the point. The point is that we, in a small capacity, no offense to Detmar, have, have pledged our commitment to Hylion over the coming years to make sure that our place in line is solidified. Now, I want you to think about something else. Think about these companies, whether it be a Detmar Logistics that's a private company or these large you know, blue chip companies that have been in place for a long, long time. Think about what's going to happen with that product validation is complete. Think about what's going to happen when we get these large companies up to a place where Detmar is in that they are an advocate for the Hylion product. 
my understanding at Detmar is that the drivers fight to get in the front seat of the uh, hybrid version that they've got that that they that they go to work in. All the drivers want to drive it because it's that fun of a truck to drive. It really does provide that extra oomph to the driver to take that driver stress off of what they've become accustomed to over the years and and they're sold. The drivers are sold on this new product. Now think about the advocacy on behalf of a Detmar that's already there. And this is where we want to bring all these large companies to a place to make sure that they are 100% confident based on the product validation that they too can go out there and advocate for the Hylion product. This is the key. This is the key to three little letters. And these are the letters that I think are the key to Hylion's success. And I'll just come out and say this. If Hylion cannot win OEMs, then this will prolong this dungeness type of situation that the stock is in right now. Okay. If Hylion is unsuccessful in getting into the OEMs, it will be the very nature of their inability to scale up to mass production levels. Okay. Um, I may be wrong on this. If I am, address it in the comments section below. I don't believe that I am. Okay. Hylion is not uh, suited right now to meet an Agility 1000 truck hyper, uh, hyper truck order, right? If Agility came in and said, Hylion, I want in year one to circulate 250 through my fleet now, could they do it? And the answer is no. If Detmar Logistics came to the table and said, Hylion, I'm ready to take delivery on 25 of my trucks, could they do it? I believe that the answer is no. I believe that the true success and everything that's going on right now at all levels of Hylion, whether it be the management board, whether it be the board of directors, at all levels are firing on all cylinders because when I pressed on this very fact, they know that the very last domino to fall is going to be sales, sales, sales on a mass scale, but we are not there yet. What has to happen and the critical component that has to take place, and we are in that phase or we're just now stepping into that phase, is the product validation stage. Here's what's going to end up happening. Just like Detmar, who has an OEM, just like a Schneider, who has solidified relationships with the OEMs, just like Ruan and just like Werner and just like Penske and just like Agility and just like uh, CR England and just like some of these other fleets who have had long standing relationships with the OEMs over the last many, many decades. Okay. If Hylion picks up the phone to the OEM directly and says, Hey, we would like to make our product a checklist on your OEM line, and we would like to make sure that the customers have available our product along your OEM lines, and it needs to be made available to them on the onset when they're placing that order book for the coming year, they're going to get laughed out of the building. They are. That is too hard of a sell, just like direct selling to the fleets. Okay. So what does that mean? What it means is once we get the product validation stage complete and we get the innovation council, and I feel like there will be a few others that are involved in this process to a point where the product validation is so strong and that these companies absolutely have quantifiable bottom line benefit to their fleets that they can integrate this into the rotation. It will be, in fact, these companies that make the sell to the OEM, not Hylion, okay? It will be the very pressure and the very ask. I really don't think it's going to be pressure at all. I think these relationships that have, ex have existed for years, if the product is that good and if the product validation stage uh, is successful and if 
the routes work for certain lines. We talked a little bit about this. There are going to be lines in certain places like Florida with flat ground that may not be the best solution for Hylion. Hylion is going to be the best solution in some of those most rigorous routes out there. It's going to be the very companies that step forward and say, yeah, we've used this product. Here's the substantiation behind this. We want this made available through our OEM, and it will be that very link that is provided by the fleets itself, not highly on trying to step in and manufacture that link and sell somebody on something that they're not ready to buy. The OEMs are not ready at this point, but the writing is on the wall. Okay. Hylian has got a finalized product. They've got a finalized proof of concept product. They've got a tried and true product validation through the hybrid product. We will march to that end to where the Alpha One is that very product that we have that the fleets are going to demand that they incorporate in their fleets. And it's going to be the very high level communications that happen between these fleet managers and the OEM managers that actually drive this thing home. And I want to be along for that for that party because that's where we are marching. That is the end we are marching to. So for you guys out there that are expecting 500 order book on the ERX, a thousand order uh, order book, even a hundred uh, hyper truck ERXs, these are all great in solidifying a queue per se. I always like to consider it a place in line. It's a token of good faith. Uh, it's a sign of good faith by these companies that are throwing in these orders, whether it be a first order. Uh, I'd like to see orders that are more realistic, five to 10, right? To start incorporating into these fleets. Now that 10 that they're going to start to incorporate into their order book is only going to be made possible on that initial year of delivery if those very connections are being made to the OEMs. So very, very complex, very, very fluid, and very, very dynamic situation going on at Hylion. This is really the takeaway that I got from this call, is to understand that these things are in phases. And the product validation stage right now, we're in the very, very beginning of Alpha 1. We just completed with the uh, hybrid version of the, um, of the product that just became available to the fleets. That's complete. Now we start on the product validation phase for the ERX. Some of it's been going on, okay? And we're not going to hear the renderings from that. But we are making an investment in this very element to where there won't need to be any selling that needs to happen on Hylion's uh, behalf. Rather, there will need to be an opportunity to take sales calls eventually. And that's really what it's gonna be. It's really gonna be as the world turns and this product really starts to make its way to the forefront as an industry leader, which it is. I mean, if you guys saw the last Nikola product that rolls out 350 uh, top end miles in optimal condition, I, I can't even this that article pissed me off so bad, so bad, because logistics fleets are not going to take on the um, uh, amount of downtime that's necessary on some of these trucks. They're not. They are not going to take on trucks that cannot go for extended ranges unless the route works. So that solution may work where the route works, but it doesn't compete at all with the routes that Hylion can boast that they can provide to their customers, guys. So very, very interesting. The retail investors are very, very sticky. I told them that I would continue to advocate for uh, Hylion uh, over the coming months, over the coming years. I told them I, it's been a, a pleasure to really kind of help educate the retail community out there. The key is awareness and education. The education is going to help with your conviction and understanding small pieces like this to really get a behind the scenes understanding of what's going on at Hylion really can kind of take your attention away from what's going on right now in a stock market where the stock is being manipulated down. It's not being forwardly put out there because I think underneath the surface, I think a lot of people understand that this is the very solution that is going to rock this industry when the big fleets get a hold of this have completed their product validation and start to put those pressures on their own 
independent OEMs to start to make this product available to them and others within other fleets. Guys, if you enjoy the content, want to make sure and subscribe, leave your questions, please, that you would ask to Thomas Healy at the bottom of this interview. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.